Hi, this is James Gunn, the Sydney Tech Geek. I'm here with Tim Schumann from Lemac, and I just wanted to um, do a video on this today because there's been a product that Black Black Magic's been um, showing off for a number of years, and we are on the verge of the release. And Tim from Lemac um, sells the product. He, he rents any particular camera you could ever want as well. But we just wanted to cover quickly this product and have a quick chat about it. So this is the um, well, the Telecine from Blackmagic, and and they bought a company a while ago. That was what was the name of the company? Sintel. Sintel, which is a very respected in the in the Telecine area at the uh, in the past. And so, can you tell us a little bit? Um, about the the release of this, this like when's it going to be released and how does it integrate with? I understand it integrates with um, Resolve. Yes, correct. So I believe it's only within a few weeks of release now. Um, it's been in development for a while, as you said. Um, basically, the the hardware is at the stage where it's ready for release, and because it's driven by Resolve 12, it's basically waiting on the release of Resolve 12. So that's pre-beta release at the moment, um, so we're expecting that to come through in the next couple of weeks, but it's very, very, very close now. Um, we're excited about showing it here because um, we've got a long history of, of shooting film and working with film cameras, um, with archival film footage and all that sort of thing. Um, so the scanner um, is able to scan in real time from 35mm material in Ultra HD or 4K. Um, you're also able to scan from 16mm uh, in 2K for an HD finish um, and essentially it um, brings something that previously would be a $1 million product um, that is probably about the size of a couple of fridges next to each other into, into a product that sits on a desktop. Um, actually, actually, this is actually just sitting on the wall here. Yeah, we, we don't actually have this mounted on the wall, so it's actually just sitting on its feet on the desk. You can either run it like that or you can bolt it onto a wall. So um, it's actually amazingly small compared to what I've seen in the past. That's yeah, one thing. It's, it's well under 60 kilos. Um, we just lifted it out and put it on the desk at the start of the show. Um, we've been running 16 mil and 35 through it. We've been transferring uh, neg also prints, um, because it's scanning the full aperture of the film, um, if you've got optical audio uh, for 35 you get stereo, optical audio for 16 you get mono. So, um, so what you're saying after you've scanned or what, well you're scanning, I'm not sure it because the product might get better as we go along, is that the, the two squiggly lines or the squiggly line that you see next to the picture can be converted to real audio within Resolve and that's yeah, the feature so of Resolve. You essentially, because it's capturing the full aperture of the film, it's capturing that audio track in the side of the image. Um, once you've captured in the files, you then go back and tell Resolve to extract the audio um, and it creates, at the moment it's creating a, a WAV file that you can then drop in the timeline and line back up with the uh, with the picture um, to resync your audio. So for, for people who have got archives and prints and that sort right. of thing, it's a really, really powerful That's right, tool. because traditionally getting that audio off in a, in a high quality way was actually quite difficult, so that answers that need as well. Now, another question, um, currently we've got a 4K chip doing the scanning here. Yep. And Everyone's quite excited about the 4.6. Will this be upgradable in that sensor mark in the future? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I would suspect it's probably the case. Um, it would make sense um, to use the 4.6K sensor in there um, because when you're scanning the film in at 4K, you're also including the perfs and the optical audio track. Once you blow up um, for reframing, um, you're probably a little bit under 4K, so that, that's if, right. if you were capturing 4.6K, it would make sense that once you blow it up, you're still above 4K. Yes. So, um, look, this has had a lot of interest from a lot of different people who have got archives of film, whether it's whether it's print or whether it's neg. Um, we've got 35 years of um, footage in our archive that we're really keen to start transferring and, and revisit. Um, and yeah, it's just a it's a beautifully simple machine um, in terms of outputs. There's a Thunderbolt port and an HDMI port on the side of it. So the HDMI, uh, you can plug into an Ultra HD TV or an HD TV. It'll automatically detect what the TV is capable of and send out the right signal for that. And the Thunderbolt is basically to transfer the data into Resolve and for driving the machine. So um, it shows up in Resolve 12 in a similar way to a capture device would previously with a Blackmagic uh, capture card. Um, and all of the controls and smarts of, of that are then done on your Mac. So we're running a um, 5K Retina, one of the new iMacs, 
um, with spec'd up features and some fairly fast storage. But essentially speaking, you know, you, you've now got something that for what was um, announced as 30,000 US dollars for the scanner, plus a Mac, plus storage, you can really start transferring files and, and, um, and revisiting, you know, film from, well, from... That does bring back the other question, right? The thing about film over digital, you know, in recent times is its cost effectiveness, right? Yeah. Well, this, you know, you still, you still rent some film cameras. Yeah, yeah, we, we do have... Um, so this is to make it more ap uh, approachable for film to be used again if you need to go to that sort of creative level? Certainly. Look, um, in recent times, the availability of, you know, spirit telecines or, or, or high-end um, HD telecines has, has pretty much come down to almost nothing within Australia. Um, so something like this then makes it a much more viable option again. So, um, yeah, we're now going to hopefully see a little bit of a, a, a resurgence in that sort of thing. We've still had um, various different people shooting on our film cameras, be it 35mm or 16 for a certain look or for certain projects, but this just makes it much more accessible for them and means that it's, again, going to be um, yeah, a bit more viable an option. Um, Certainly various different film schools still teach shooting on film because of the discipline that it actually encourages in the students to not shoot way too much footage and to think really hard about what they're about to shoot, to rehearse and to shoot with fairly tight ratios That's rather right. than just buttoning on and rolling for, for hours on end. Yeah. Um, so look, we're really excited about it. Um, now that it's within a few weeks of release, um, I think there's going to be a lot of interest um, and yeah, we've been really happy to show it at the show. Well, thanks a lot, Tim. Really appreciate your input and the news about the, the telecine because it, it does answer a need in the industry in terms of re repertory and, and archival footage, which I think has been largely forgotten. Yep. Um, so it's good to see that sort of information and technology coming out. Anyway, thanks a lot, Tim. Pleasure. All right, that's James Garden with Tim Schumann from uh, Lemac. If you want to get any, rent anything and you're in Australia, give him a call. Uh, and that, we're at Simpty Australia in 2015. Bye for now.